hey chemists, I'm coming to you from my office today. I also brought along a new toy, so uh, you can see my pen. I can write on the screen now, which is pretty awesome, so you can look forward to that in, in this PowerPoint and in notes PowerPoints to come. So here we go. You're writing down the underlined items into your notebook. So we're going to talk about electron configuration. So you know in general that the electrons are around the outside of the nucleus. We don't know exactly how they're arranged, except maybe you remember this idea of energy levels. So electron configuration, which we're going to talk about today, is the arrangement of electrons around the nucleus of the atom. Every element has a different arrangement of electrons, and that makes each element different from other elements. So different elements have different numbers of protons. They also have different electron arrangements. So where are all of these electrons? So you often see this kind of picture of the atom where all of the electrons are swirling around the nucleus in these planetary orbits. This is not really the case. And we're going to talk about what the case really is today. So you remember energy levels. Energy levels are these shells or layers around the nucleus. We're going to fill up the lower levels closer to the nucleus first and then build out. The very first energy level can hold up to two electrons. The second one can hold up to eight, and the third one can hold up to eight. And we're not going to talk about anything much bigger than that. So let's practice showing some really simple structures. So we know that hydrogen has one valence electron. So if this is the nucleus, here's the energy level. And we know that hydrogen just has one electron. That's all that exists there. If we're going to do magnesium, we know that has um, the atomic number 12. So just for simplicity, I'm going to put plus 12 in the middle. We know that the first two electrons can go on the first energy level. I draw a second energy level. Two, three, four. This will fit up to eight. Uh, and that takes care of eight, nine, ten. And we know we have two more. So here is woo, one more energy level. I'm going to put the last two electrons on that valent shell right here. So we're going to talk in more depth than energy level. We're going to talk about sublevels, orbitals, and where the electrons are in the orbitals today. So smaller than energy levels are sublevels. So energy levels have sublevels, and sublevels have orbitals. Orbitals each have up to two electrons. So inside each energy level, there's one or more sublevel made from different shaped orbitals. So energy level one, that's the very first circle that you draw, um, just has one sublevel and it's the S shape. And we'll talk about what shape S is in a minute. Energy level two, um, which is the second energy level, has an S shaped sublevel and a P shaped sublevel. Energy level three has three sublevels. It has an S, a P, and then a D shaped sublevel. And four, which is, this is getting pretty big here. These are things in period four, starting with potassium, has an S, P, D, and an F shaped sublevels. So we'll talk about what shapes those are in just a minute. So an orbital is an area where you expect to find the electron. It's not pinning the electron down to any specific place. It's where you will probably find it. So this is like, if you have math second period, we expect that there's a high probability to find you in math class. Maybe there's a slight chance you might be in the bathroom or you might be absent that day, but almost positively, we'll find you in the math classroom. That's sort of like an orbital. Almost positively, that is the area somewhere in which we'll find the electron. You're going to be somewhere in the math classroom. The electron is going to be somewhere inside of the shape called an orbital. So here they are, the S-shaped sublevel has just one orbital, and it's shaped like a sphere. So it's, uh, where's my pointer here? It's just ball shaped. It's the P shaped orbital is, um, there are three of them, and each of them are shaped like a figure eight, or like two balloons tied end to end. The D will have five of these clover type shapes here, and the F will have seven of these like crazy shapes down here. It's not just seven of each of these balloon parts, it's seven total ones of those. So in your notes, just make a quick sketch of each of these. The S is a sphere, P is like a figure eight or a dumbbell shape, D is a clover, and F is, who knows, doesn't have a name. So how do we figure out where the electrons are? So we have all these places, like each energy level has a sublevel, sublevels have different shaped orbitals, and orbitals hold the electrons. How do you figure out where exactly the electrons are? So we're going to follow three very simple rules for electron configuration. The first rule is called the Aufbau principle, which says that an electron goes into the lowest energy orbital that has space for it. 
So way down, if you look at this diagram, the nucleus is way down here. We're going to start by filling in electrons as close to the nucleus as we can. And then when we run out of space, we'll put them a little bit further away and then a little bit further away. But we'll start as close to the nucleus as we can. Rule number two is called the Pauli exclusion principle. There's Dr. Pauli down at the bottom. No two electrons can have exactly the same configuration. Different elements have different configurations, so no two electrons can be in exactly the same place. And number three, my favorite, the Huns rule. Orbitals of equal energy are each occupied by one electron before any orbital is occupied by a second electron. So you can think about this. You're, you're just finished playing a soccer game. You get back on the bus. You're muddy and wet. It's gross out. Everybody finds their own seat. It's only when every single bus seat, you know they're kind of small, when every single bus seat has one kid in it that you're forced to go sit with somebody. And then the second person occupies each seat. So orbitals get one electron. When all of the orbitals are full with one, there will be a second electron in each orbital. So here's the second part of this PowerPoint, orbital notation. So how do we show the electron configuration for some particular element? We're going to show it first using orbital notation, and then we'll go back at the end and write down the electron configuration notation. So we're going to use boxes to represent orbitals. We're going to use arrows to represent the electrons. And underneath, we're going to write down what energy level and what shape sublevel we have going on. So here's our first example. We're going to start by doing beryllium. And I check on my periodic table and find that beryllium has four electrons. So here we go. We're going to start by using the Aufbau principle. The very first place that electrons go is in the first energy level, which only has an S sublevel. One, two. Okay, that's full. Our next energy level is two, and the first sublevel is S always. Up, down. And we've used all four electrons, so this is the orbital notation for beryllium. Pretty simple. Let's look at a slightly more complicated example of silicone. So looking at the periodic table, silicone has 14 electrons in total. The first two always go in the first energy level, the S sublevel. Then we're going to fill up 2S, so the second energy level, the S sublevel. And then we're going to go to 2P. Now watch what happens. We're going to use Hund's rule here. We're going to go up, up, up. So we're going to put one electron in each orbital. And then when we run out of space, we're going to put a second electron in each orbital. So that's 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 so far, so we have two more to go. After 2P, we've run out of space on the second energy level, so we're going to go to the third energy level where we have two more. So that's 12. We've got two left. Um, we've got 3P. Remember Hund's rule, up, up. And now we're out of electrons. I think 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. This is the uh, orbital notation for silicone. Notice that it has two electrons by itself, by themselves, in 3P. All right, so there's one other way to write down the configuration of the electrons, so where they are, and it's a, a simpler way. You don't have to draw boxes and arrows. It's called electron configuration notation. So we're going to write down the number of the main energy level, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then the sublevel, S, P, D, or F, and then as a superscript, so up in the air, the number of electrons in that sublevel. So carbon, for example, has six electrons. The first two go in 1s, the second two go in 2s, and the last two go in 2p. And we're going to do it for beryllium, silicone, and neon, since we already did all the hard work here. So 1s for beryllium, we have two electrons. There they are, one, two. And then in the 2s, we have two. So that's the electron configuration notation. It's much faster to write. For silicone, we have 1s2. 2s2, 2p6 because it's full, 3s2, and then 3p. You know that p's can hold up to 6, but here we only have 2, so our superscript is 2. All right, so in your notebook, write down a 1 to 2 sentence summary of what you learned here. Be ready to use these skills tomorrow. You'll be writing orbital notation and electron configuration notation, and any questions that you have, jot them down, and we'll answer them tomorrow. Have a good night.